What I want to explain now is uh, the difference between the par rate curve, the spot rate curve, and the forward rate curve, because this is actually important. Now, I don't know if you're going to actually have to do all the math on the exam, and if it is, they're going to keep the math pretty simple, but traditionally, they do ask you to do many times either bootstrapping or deriving forward rates from spot rates. Bootstrapping is when we come up with spot rates from the par rate curve, and and many times what they'll ask you to do is come up with forward rates from a, to come up with forward rates from a series of spot rates. And I will show you a couple of examples. All right, so in any case, if you take a look at your screen right now, we're actually going to show you an example of bootstrapping, where we're deriving, and I put this for you in parentheses, spot rates from par rates. What do we mean by the par rate curve? The par rate curve is basically a curve that is created from the par rates on bonds that are trading at par for all different kinds of maturities of par bonds. So par rates for bonds with different maturities are going to create what we call the par rate curve or simply what we call the par curve. And the par rate will be equal to the coupon rate on the bond. If the bond is at par, your yield to maturity, your current yield, everything is the same as your coupon rate. That's because we're assuming that the bond is at par. And what we're going to do is, as we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate in a moment, is we're going to use a process here called bootstrapping so that we can use spot rates, which are also known as zero coupon rates, to derive the par yield curve. Uh, we're going to use the, the process of bootstrapping to derive the spot rates from a series of par rate bonds. So again, remember that we derive spot rates from the par rate curve using a process called bootstrapping. Okay? And the important point again to keep out of all of this is that spot rates can be derived from par rates and forward rates can be derived from spot rates. So let's take the first step of deriving spot rates from a series of par rates. If you take a look at this example on your screen, you're going to see that I have three terms to maturity. One year maturity, two year maturity, and three year maturity. The par rates are 1%, 1.25%, and 1.5%. And then in the last column I'm saying, okay, based on these par rate bonds, meaning that the bonds are at par, which is on a percentage basis 100, I could see that the coupon rates are 1%, 1.25, and 1.5%. Okay? And therefore, the par rates with maturity are increasing, so I have an upward sloping yield curve. Okay? And this is going to lead us to the conclusion of how the forward rates and spot rates and par rates relate in a upward sloping environment. Which one is going to be above which one? All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to come up with, or I am going to come up with the spot rates for the one year maturity, two year maturity, and three year maturity based on these par rates of 1%, 1.25, and 1.5%. How do I come up with the spot rate for the one year maturity? Well, here's what I need to do. I need to say, okay, well, what's the price of the bond? That's on the left hand side. The price of the bond today, or the market price of the bond, is equal to the present value of the future cash flows, correct? All right, so what I'm going to do, and if you take a look at your next screen, is I'm going to show you how to come up with the one year spot rate. I know that the bond is at par, so the market price is par, which is 100. And I also know what else? That this is a 1% bond. So the coupon rate is 1%. So I know that in a year from now, I'm going to have $101. I'm going to be returned the principal of 100 plus $1 worth of coupons. So 101. So then my question then becomes, what is the discount rate that I have to discount the $101 future value to get the market price today, which is the par price of 100? 1%. So that's your Theory, that's your proof that I take 101 and I divide it by 1 plus x to the first equals 100 and if I solve for x I would get 1.01 or I would get 1%. Okay? So again the numerator there is the cash flow at maturity for a $100 par plus $1 coupon and then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the discount rate but if we do that it should almost like be clear to you that that would be 1%. So then going back to the previous screen we would say okay the spot rate for the one year maturity is 1% and we have to retain that. That the spot rate is 1% because what we're going to do is we're going to discount each of the cash, we're going to derive the spot rate curve this way. So now let's come up with the, let's come up with the spot rate for the two year term to maturity. Well I know that the coupon is 1.25%, again the bond is at par, so 100 is going to equal what? We're going to assume that the coupons are paid out what? Annually. This is not a one year bond ladies and gentlemen, this is a 
two-year bond. So what cash flow am I going to have in the first year? 1.25, the coupon, right? 1.25% of 100 is 1.25, right? Because again, we're, how do we come up with the coupons? We, the, the amount, it's always the coupon rate times the face value. The face value is always par. So the first cash flow will be 1.25. And then what would the second cash flow be? The second cash flow at the end of the second year would not only be the principal, return of principal of 100, but also the last coupon of 1.25. So that'll be 100 plus 1.25, which would be 101.25. And then what would I have to do? I have 100, and I'm gonna show you the math in a second. 100 is equal to 1.25 over what? What am I gonna discount that? by the first period spot rate of 1%. So 1.25 will be divided by 1.01 to the first. And then the second cash flow of 101.25, the coupon plus the principal, has to be discounted at one plus the second period spot rate, second period spot rate, which we're gonna try to solve, raised to the second. So if you now go to your second screen, which shows you the two year spot rate, I've laid it all out for you, okay? And if we solve for X, you would come up with 1.252, okay? All right, now then what we could do is we could go back to the original screen about the bootstrapping, and we could say, okay, now we know that the one period spot rate was 1%, we calculated that first, and now we have that the second period spot rate is 1.252%. What am I slowly seeing? I'm slowly seeing that the spot rate curve is above the par rate curve, not dramatically, but it's above it. And that's what happens when I have a positively sloped yield curve. I will see that the spot rate curve is above the par rate curve. And as you'll see in a, in a little while, the forward rate curve will be above the spot rate curve. I'm gonna come back to this. I'm just letting you get, the, get this all gelled together. So you could put in 1.252 for the two period spot rate. Now what do we do for the third period spot rate? Well, I know that the coupons are 1.5 and how many of them are gonna be? 1.5 for the first period, 1.5 for the second period, and then 101.5, the coupon plus the principal return, 101.5 for the third period's cash flow. The first cash flow of 1.5 will be discounted at the first period spot rate of 1%. The second cash flow, which is also 1.5, the coupon will be discounted at the second period spot rate, which we just calculated was 1.252%. But then the third period cash flow, which is the last coupon of 1.5 plus the principal of 100, so that makes 101.5. We need to find out what is that third discount rate that we're gonna to raise to the third so that it equals the par value of the bond, which is 100. If you now go to the next screen, which is the three year spot rate, I laid out the math for you. 100 is equal to 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 101.5. We discount the first cash flow by 1%, the first period spot rate, the second cash flow by the two period spot rate, and then we're gonna solve for the third period spot rate today. And we do that and we get 1.51%. Now if you have trouble with this algebra and math, let me know, I'll try to help you out, but hopefully you've got enough good math skills to, to solve for that. And you get 1.51%. So what we basically see is the spot rates are 1%, 1.252% and 1.51% for the one year maturity, two year three, and three year maturity. And those spot rates are above the par rates. So in an increasing price environment, this is the conclusion, in an increasing price environment, what we've done through bootstrapping is demonstrated that in an increasing price environment, in an upward sloping yield curve environment, the spot rate curve will lie above the par rate curve. Okay, that is very important. And then if you look at the next screen here, I'm showing you an upward sloping yield curve where interest rates are increasing with maturity. We just demonstrated, again, I'm making this a little bit more dramatic, is that the spot rate curve, which is derived from the par rate curve, lies above the par rate curve. And in a moment, we're gonna demonstrate that the forward rate curve or forward rates will lie above the spot rate curve, okay? And again, you'll take a note that the distance between the curves is exaggerated just for effect only. Mm -hmm.